Alrighty guys, welcome back. We'll see if I can get through this video without my dog barking. So um, I've got the new Blade Fusion 180 Smart and this heli is pretty neat to me because I first got into helicopters around the time the original Fusion 180 came out. It may even be the first video on my channel. Um, so that was about 2019 when I very started flying helicopters. I've been into airplanes for a long time, but not helis. I'm rather new to helicopters. And so anyway, the original Fusion 180 uh, I thought was pretty good. There were some things I did not like about it and I ended up selling that model. So I don't have it anymore for comparison, but I have gone through and I have found, I'm pretty sure every single thing that is different between this one and the old one. Um, it's a little bit more money than what it used to be, but that doesn't surprise me at all. I still think it's a fair price. If you look at this market, you know, this thing's competing with like, kind of like the OMP, the T-Rex 150 or the, the T-Rex 15 or whatever. So, um, if you're a spectrum guy, then this is definitely the cheapest way to go. Um, and I actually really like what I'm seeing here so far. I just got this thing in literally 20 minutes ago. I haven't had time to fly it, but let's look at everything that's new. Let's go ahead and move this box and take a look here. Um, well, it's orange. That's one thing. And I actually like it. I think the orange coloring looks pretty good. It's still a Lexan canopy, a, a rather large one. So it should fit that 4S, you know, just as easily as the original one did. Carbon fiber frame has been redone. Um, so let's go ahead and start getting into what is new. Let's take off this uh, canopy here. These grommets sure hug these posts really, really well. Uh, canopy, it's a, uh, a three-piece canopy like usual. I don't really like to see that because then you have this ugly overlapping line. Um, I'm not sure why they just can't do one solid mold, but for whatever reason, they, they can't. So it's, it's not the most beautiful canopy, but it is rather thick and it should be pretty stout. Here is the helicopter. Yes, it looks very similar, but also very different. It actually really looks like a really mini 480 fusion the way the chassis is it looks more like tall and vertical than the old one uh, so let's go over the new stuff here actually i'm going to hold it uh the landing gear the landing gear is new it is no longer carbon fiber they tried the whole sleek carbon fiber you know look and people just didn't like it because they would tip over and it wasn't it wasn't stable so now they've gone back to the plastic it's cheaper to replace and this thing has quite a wide stance on it and it also sits up pretty pretty tall as well. You shouldn't have any issues clearing grass and stuff like that. Um, so I like this. It's out of a, it's molded out of a very hard composite. I'm a big fan of it. Looks good. Uh, this uh, little vertical fin back here is also new and I actually like this a lot better than the old one. The old one was painted carbon fiber and it just wasn't that clean looking. Um, this is a molded piece of plastic. It's got beautiful lines in it. Looks cool. Very modern. I like this better than I do the painted carbon fiber, and this obviously is going to be flexy or bendy, and it's going to be cheaper to replace. Uh, the front tail case is different on this model compared to the old one. So you can see here the front tail case is made out of plastic. The old one was aluminum. Um, this one also incorporates the belt guide into the tail case. And I know it's going to be hard to see, probably impossible, but there's a, there's the belt guide screws right there. So the belt guide is attached to the tail case. Um, the old one, it was a separate belt guide and then a separate tail case. So this is a little bit more streamlined. Um, I think it's better. I think it has better clamping power on the boom. And um, I'm actually a fan of this tail case. It looks a little bit more simple and uh, I don't have an issue with things being plastic if it works better than an aluminum version. I really don't. So a new front tail case and also a uh, belt guide there. It's a little bit different than the old one. Uh, the motor mount is different. Uh, this also has a different motor. This is a 3,900 kV motor. They don't tell you the size of the can, but this is a higher kV. The old one was 3,600, so this is a little bit quicker. And also, I think it might be a little bit bigger in diameter. I think it is a bigger motor. This is a very similar size motor than what was on the old Blade SRs. Um, so uh, that is that. Um, what else do I have written down here? The blades. The blades are new. They are much wider in cord and they give you some extra blades here. And these are actually the original Fusion 180 blades. And you can see that they are much skinnier um, compared to these new ones. I know I should have taken them out of the plastic. I apologize, but they are skinnier. These are the original blades. So if you believe that your Fusion 180 is too floaty the way that it is, you can put on these blades um, and it won't be as uh, it won't be as floaty. Maybe be a little bit more neutral. Um, you may like that better. 
Uh, also, as a note, this is the bind plug here. I've took the double side tape. They they, they have it double side taped on, but once you bind it, I don't see why you'd want to keep this adapter in there unless you're afraid it might come unbound or something. But once you bind it, you're more than welcome to take this out of the flight controller and lose the extra weight and the ugly bind plug there. So I just didn't take it off just to show you what I was doing. Uh, so yes, new blades. Um, and they're also much thicker um, than the original ones. There's not going to be nearly... Um, as much bend or flex, uh, higher nylon plastic, you can see that actually that rough texture look, that, that means that the plastic's got more nylon in it typically. Um, the flight controller is new. I'm pretty excited about this. This has the uh, 6250 MH, good Lord, MHXB. There you go, lots of letters and numbers. This is uh, compared to their old um, AR6335. And this uh, you know supports forward programming so in your gen 2 radio you can go in there and you can tune this thing that's great to hear i absolutely love that you're able to go in and change things around let's say that this thing drifts and safe you can go into altitude trim and fix that it's just much easier uh, i am a huge fan of this flight controller here i actually use the bigger one on my bigger models um okay IC2, they've gone away from the JST connectors and now they're giving you IC2s, which I think that's great. JSTs don't, they're very small and they really don't let a lot of, uh, uh, you know, they probably have more resistance than an IC2, I would definitely venture to say. Um, now the G2 batteries that they're pushing for this are junk right now. They're all have bad cells if you look at the reviews. So they got a bad batch of those. So I went ahead and just bought another Gen 1. I, I have no issues with Gen 1 batteries. Um, and I will be putting a IC2 on here. Uh, I'm just going to chop this off. And while I'm at it, I'm going to chop it way down here and get rid of all of this extra wire here um, because I've got me some IC2s. Look at these little suckers. So, yep, easy peasy. We'll get rid of all that cable at the same time. Um, but, yeah, 450 milliamp 4S. Um, while on the topic of goodies, I guess, um, you will get a little baggage here with tons of zip ties. That's awesome. Tons of little zip ties. Uh, Velcro double side. This is gyro tape for your um, your flight controller. That's great to see. Little bits of thinner double sided tape there. One long zip tie and then a bind plug. Awesome. Uh, and a manual. But don't use this manual. Always use the online manual because they can correct any um, anything that's incorrect. Um, so any errors, they can correct it online. All right, now let's look at the uh, ESC. Now the old ESC was a 20 amp um, ESC that was unnamed. It was probably a Hobbywing ESC, I'm sure, or something like that. But now they're giving you the Avian ESC, which is a, it is a Hobbywing ESC. Uh, but you can actually go in, plug your Avian ESC and do some tuning. You can go in there and change things. You can also change the RPM right by the throttle curve, which you were able to do that before anyway. Uh, but yeah, 15 amp versus 20 amp. They've actually dropped the amperage. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, bigger motor with a higher KV. Uh, I guess they just didn't need all that amps. Um, so I would be uh, interested in seeing RPM this versus the old one. I wonder if it actually spins a little slower uh, or maybe quicker. I would, I would think maybe around the same. I'm not really sure um, because you got a higher KV motor but lower amperage ESC. But nonetheless, Avian ESC, I'm fine with that. They're easy to work. They are tunable. And so, I mean, hey, cool. Uh, rotor links, they changed the rotor links on this model. They used to have a, a plastic follower arm design. And now they've got these new adjustable rotor links here. You can see them right there. Um, that's awesome because then you can do your blade tracking. You can adjust your pitch if it's off. Um, the old follower arm design was non-adjustable at all. So they've got a whole new design here and the way it connects to the grip is new as well. Um, that looks really sharp. I love that they have a, a looks like a 2.0 Allen head there, an Allen screw. That's great. Allen hardware all through this helicopter. That's freaking awesome because the Phillips absolutely sucks. Um, great. Same servos as the old one. You got your tail servo there and your little cyclics um, held together by a freaking... Um, <laughs> strip of uh, heat shrink or something like that, but hey, it works just fine. Uh, and then I think I already mentioned the mainframe is new. Um, they have redone the mainframe a little bit differently. So uh, yeah, same battery tray, still using the old blade logo. Awesome to see. Uh, and there's my dog barking. That's it, guys. Um, I got through it without the dog being too annoying. That is all there is to it. I'm looking at my list over here. A good looking helicopter. Um, now for a little size comparison here. Well, you know what? Let me leave that off. The closest thing, well, other than the, uh, the 150 if you wanted to get that, but I mean, choose one really. There's no reason to get two. 
either the 180 or the 150 if you want to get the 150 smart it's a motorized tail it's more simple um but yeah mcpx bl2 this is you know substantially larger this is you know built like a normal helicopter but teeny so you got a belt you got a large boom you got a pitch slider back here no motorized tail no direct drive it's good old belt very forgiving very accurate as well um so if you're wanting to get into a um helicopter that is um, you know, constructed more like what you see when you get to the nicer and bigger helis. This is a great thing to jump into. Um, the always make sure that, and then there's no one way bearing uh, in this heli either, so no auto rotations. Uh, brass pinion, and there is uh, plenty of room between the gears. They meshed mine just perfectly fine. Always make sure you check that. No issues there, and that's it. Looks good. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And thank you for watching.